All right. Uh, today, let's look at how to do a hydroforming analysis using uh, a linear uh, airbag model, uh, which generates a, a deformed shape that looks like this, right? So the basic idea here is that I'm going to start out with a tube, right? But I'm going to going to uniformly expand the pressure until uh, uh, it hits into like a little little round surface. This is a much very much like the expansion of a of a of a uh, of a catheter, for example, right? A balloon catheter. Uh, basically, the way this is done is that is we're essentially having the yellow piece being like the fixture, and we're applying internal pressure all around the inside of the tube. Uh, but we're doing so not by applying a pressure boundary condition, but what we're doing here is actually using something called the air by uh, an airbag model, which allow, which essentially allows us to 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 accomplish that. Okay, so um, what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and look at the model that we, we have, I've, I've essentially set up here. So what we have is essentially this piece right here, right? This inside piece right here basically creates a internal geometry. This internal geometry represents the, the, the final shape that I want to achieve. Uh, what I also have are these two caps which are locked the, the surface in, and then I have a tube which is going to start. And what's happening here is that as I solve this model, the internal surfaces that, that's encapsulated by the by the green piece and the two orange pieces are going to essentially represent an airbag model. Within the airbag model, it allows me to apply a direct pressure on all surfaces on the, within the airbag, which is going to uniformly expand uh, uh, the, the, the green tube into the shape that we desire. And this is a very good modeling technique for modeling anything from the thermal or from the hydroforming of a of a of a tube to say for example expanding a balloon catheter for example right it can all be done with a similar uh, technique as we've demonstrated okay so let's go ahead and do a quick demo um, what we have right in this model is exactly as we described so what I'm gonna do here is that I'm going to start here with a cross section. So we can sort of see what's happening in here, right? So you can sort of see this is what's happening with this model. Uh, what we have is aluminum material, well, which I, which is just a linear elastic material, which I'm going to apply to uh, to the, the green tube. I'm going to call this the tube. And then I'm going to apply the aluminum material to it uh, because it's a softer material. And for the other part, this is a cap one. And then this is a cap two. And then the the fixture is on the very outside, right? The fixture, uh, the both the fixture and the caps are going to be just a steel material. And I'm gonna actually make the the, the cap itself rigid, uh, uh, as well as well as keep it from from deforming altogether, right? So let's go ahead and just do that before we even up, uh, up doing anything else. So I'm gonna turn the two cap from deformable to rigid at the start of the transient analysis, right? And uh, what I'm gonna do uh, is. Uh, keep these these two things rigid, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna lock the the end of the cap down so they don't they're not allowed to move, right? Basically, it, it prevents the expansion of the tube. So as I as I uh, uh, sort of you know, it prevents the contraction of the tube as I expand the tube in in the, in the internal shape, right? There's going to be like a pulling of the of the the green piece into the 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 cavity here, and this this boundary condition right here essentially prevents that extraction from happening. Right. Uh, what I also wanted to do is to go ahead and lock the outside of the of the uh, 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 fixture. Right. These fixtures are going to be locked outside. I'm gonna I'm gonna select the last face as well. All right. So this is going to be uh, all four faces on the outside. All right. This just prevents the fixture itself from moving. Um, let's go ahead and mesh the part. Right. The model itself is very very easy to set up. Uh, the key here is to demonstrate the modeling technique. Right. So what we're going to do here with the mesh is that we're going to apply a global mesh of uh, three millimeters. Um, and then I'm going to apply a uh, face meshing around the inside of this part, right? So the global meshing is going to take care of the general element size across the board. Uh, what I like to do is to make sure I have three elements across the thickness. So what I can do here is to change this to a face sizing. And ensure I have uh, a very small mesh here. I'm going to do one millimeter, and I make sure there is no D feature at all. So I'm going to do like 0.005. This ensures I have no D feature, and I'm going to turn on proximity and making sure my proximity has a very low mean size and has a gap factor of three applied only to faces. 
And what this will do is it will essentially creates a hopefully a layer mesh, uh, a a sweep mesh across the 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 this green piece, and it's going to keep, uh, it's going to keep the the uh, the mesh as three uh, cross sections, and it did not work. I wonder why that is. So let's double check why it didn't work. Uh oh, I know. I need to. I think I need to apply it to both sides, both the source and the target side. So there's no mistake. So let's do that. Hopefully that will fixes it. Let's see. Okay, now I have three element across that thickness, and that's what I wanted to achieve, right? And then if you look at everything else, the other mesh are really, really pretty trivial, right? These two bodies, I'm gonna, I made them rigid so they don't define, they don't define the 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 uh, actual uh, cross section. I'm mean, sorry, actual time step in the analysis and the outside fixture. Uh, is mostly trivial, right? The element is pretty large, and what's going to define the, uh, the the stable time increment is going to be the element on the on the aluminum piece, uh, which is the way we intended. Now, what I also needed to do here is to generate a contact pair, which is going to be an automatic contact pair between the outside of the of the. Uh, I'm going to do like a frictional contact, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select the 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 entire tube. Right, which is going to be the whole surface around it, and then the on the inside, I'm going to select basically. I just go and hide all others. Basically, these four faces, right? So let's go ahead and and take a look at it to make sure it's done correctly. Basically, what I have is on the inside is all the surface on the inside, and then the 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 contact pair is going to encompass. Uh, show all body. It's going to encompass the tube. So as the tube expands, it's going to see contact with the internal feature, as you can sort of imagine. And this is the frictional contact, which is an automatic surface-to-surface -surface contact that I'm generating in the model, right? Uh, uh, and that, that allows the expansion to basically be with, be, be restrained, uh, be constrained within the, the fixture itself. And I just go ahead and assign some basic value for the for the FS and FD. Uh, it doesn't really matter in this case. And we're, we're sort of good to go. Okay, now let's look at analysis settings. So we know this is going to be a mostly a quasi-static analysis. So I'm going to set the end time to be something pretty small, like 10 microseconds or 10 uh, milliseconds, right? Uh, and this allows us to basically uh, uh, set the termination time to be something pretty, pretty small. Um, same as usual, right? If you look at my video, what I usually do is that I will base, I will actually uh, remove the use of any default control cards. And I will also remove the use of uh, uh, any uh, database cards, then I'm gonna write my own into it, right? So what I'm gonna do right away before I do the airbag stuff. Uh, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Sorry about that. Uh, what I wanted to do here is to go ahead and generate a a command snippet. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna call the first one database, and we call the second one control. Now, if you don't know what, if you can't see exactly what I entered, you can just use default in this case. Just make sure you can actually read uh, what you wrote down in the model, right? So I'm gonna say some, this something to be pretty small actually, and then I'm going to use the default control cards, which are ones that I've essentially looked at. Oh, I, I just flipped them again, didn't I? I always do that. So this is a control, and that's database. And like, like I said, you can use default. You're probably gonna work out okay in this case. It doesn't really matter that much, right? Okay, so what we have is the fixed supporting the fixed support holding everything together. Then we have the control card data because we're turning these two things rigid, uh, uh, and then the, this prevents the tube itself from expanding. So all we now we have to do is to essentially generate an airbag model. Uh, the way we're gonna do this, we're gonna call this the airbag linear fluid, right? The airbag linear fluid model is essentially one in which uh, in which we are. Uh, I'm gonna show the manual real quick. It's always good to refer to the manual, right? So if you look at the, the, this this card, right? This function, this card right here, basically allows us to apply a pressure on the internal surfaces of the body based on this LCID parameter, right? Which is gonna apply pressure as a function of time. Um, so this this pressure calculation, if you don't define an LCID, is going to define pressure based on some initial volume. And based on some kind of mass that you, mass flow like mass rate uh, mass flow rate that you're defining in the model, right? So instead of using a a uh, uh, a mass per unit time as a function uh, 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 as an input, 
I'm just going to keep these value at zero, right? So instead of defining mass flow, I'm going to define the pressure directly. Uh, and I'm going to do that on a, on a low curve, which is going to give us essentially what we wanted. Okay. Now, if you look at the actual model, right? Like I said, I always have a pre-prepared, uh, uh, I always have a pre-prepared, uh, uh, you know, key card that I can just import, right? So in this case, I can just import something like this in here, right? So what I would do instead is let's go ahead and generate that. So I'm going to generate a uh, airbag linear fluid ID, right? Now this 151 right here is what I'm about to do first, right? So what we want to do with an airbag model is that you have to select surfaces. Again, you have to select surfaces to define the internal uh, boundary of an airbag, which means it has to be sort of a closed volume, right? Uh, and once we have the surfaces, we're going to call this the air bag uh, uh, tube, right? And then this tube surface is going to be a set of surfaces, right? As you can see, uh, this set of, set of surfaces is going to define the airbag model. I'm going to set it all of a ID to 151. And what this is going to do is going to generate a set segment in the model. This set segment is going to call out 151. And this uh, set type, when it's zero, it's looking for a set segment. If it's one, it's looking for a part, right? So we want to do 151. Referring to a sex segment, I'm going to set the sig type to, to zero. Everything else in the default card doesn't really matter. You can just leave as it is. Uh, what we do want to do is make sure we enter the correct bulk modulus and the density of water, right? In this case, I have the bulk modulus be around like 2.1 gigapascal. And then the, the density is about one, one uh, gram per centimeter cubic, right? And then from there, I'm going to set a low curve ID to 55. This low curve is going to define the pressure from zero to the termination time up to 1500. Uh, 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 like a PSI in, in this case. So basically what happens here is that this unit right here is, is linear ramping from zero to termination time. And it's going to uniformly apply to on the, all the, all the uh, walls inside this airbag, including these right here. Right. And then you can read about, about the exact pressure application in the documentation. It's actually pretty simple. Uh, I mostly just play around with the pressure until I get the response I was looking for based on the material that I defined here. It wasn't really an engineering question that wasn't actually representing the actual hydroforming process, right? But all we have to do and remember is, that, is to define the internal surface, right? And then use an airbag model to call out the, the segment and then define your load curve rep representing here based on the pressure that we want to do. And that essentially applies an internal pressure from zero to 1500. Uh, uh, from zero to the termination time, right? And that linear ramps up the pressure. So once this is all set up, right, I'm going to save, right? You can write out an input file, but basically what you will look at is essentially a model that look like this, right? So for example, I can turn everything on, right? So you can sort of see, uh, you're going to start at zero and it's going to ramp up pretty slowly, right? And then it's going to, it, once it hits a certain amount of pressure, it's going to expand it. And then the actual, the pressure I guess is actually a little bit too high. So you can see around this point is my maximum pressure I needed. Right, but I can keep going, which you generate some kind of compression around the element because I didn't, I mostly just guess the pressure value, right? And this is essentially represents the internal pressure generated by the, the fluid, the, the, the quote unquote analytical fluid inside here. And all we're doing is just applying a linearly ramping uh, uh, pressure value, right? So we're going to actually check the pressure value here. Uh, we'll probably want to do something a little bit uh, better scale, right? So we're going to do like negative four, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, 4,000, uh, whoops, 4,000 to negative 4,000, as you can sort of see, uh, on one side, it's mostly, mostly it's a compression, right? Because we're just compressing everything. So you can sort of see, uh, uh, that's the nature of the pressure gradient that we're looking at, right? You can also look at stresses if you want, uh, in this case, it doesn't, doesn't really do, do a whole lot, right? Okay, so this basically summarizes the problem, right? So, ba so the, the basic strategy here to, to, to recognize is that, Based on the shape of the fixture, I can expand any substrate, any uh, default initial shape into whatever shape I'm looking for by using this airbag model to apply a uniform pressure from within. This literally models the, the, the pressure from the fluids, applying uniform pressure on the, on the structure, right? So instead of modeling the fluid directly, we can just use an airbag to apply an analytical pressure, pressure uh, 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 BC on the internal surface, which gives a very nice look at a sort of like a balloon expansion type of uh, a hydroforming process. Okay, thank you very much.